It's official, ULA is out, and SpaceX is stepping in to take over. After decades of dominance in U.S. space defense launches, United Launch Alliance is packing its bags, shutting down operations at Cape Canaveral's historic SLC-37. And, get this, SpaceX is already tearing down their towers and gearing up for Starship launches from the same pad. This isn't just about rockets. This is a seismic power shift in the space industry. From the old, expensive legacy systems to the fast, innovative world of new space. ULA is being sold off, SpaceX is soaring, and the Pentagon is putting its trust in Elon's team. In today's TechMap episode, we'll break down why ULA's collapse was inevitable, how SpaceX is rewriting the rules, and what this means for the future of space exploration, national defense, and even Mars. In June 1959, Construction began on the historic SLC-37 under the direction of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. It was originally intended for the Juno-5 missile, which was later renamed Saturn. The site features two launch pads, LC-37A and LC-37B. While Pad 37A was never used, Pad 37B played a key role in the 1960s supporting several launches of the Apollo program's Saturn-1 and Saturn-1B rockets. This era marked a significant chapter in the history of American spaceflight. Jumping ahead to the late 1990s and early 2000s, Boeing took control of the site to launch its new Delta IV rockets as part of the U.S. Air Force's evolved expendable launch vehicle program. Major upgrades were made to the complex, including the addition of a 330-foot-tall mobile service tower to support all Delta IV variants. The first Delta IV launched from SLC-37 in November 2002, followed by the debut flight of the Delta IV Heavy in December 2004. In 2006, Boeing and Lockheed Martin merged their launch operations to form United Launch Alliance, which took over the site. Under ULA, SLC-37, supported dozens of Delta IV medium and heavy missions, mainly for U.S. government and military purposes. Notable NASA missions launched from here include the Orion Exploration Flight Test 1 in 2014 and the Parker Solar Probe in 2018. Over its operational life, SLC-37 hosted 35 Delta IV launches under ULA, culminating with the rocket's final mission in April 2024. With the retirement of the Delta IV, ULA chose not to renew its lease on SLC-37, leaving the complex without an operator. However, SpaceX is now expected to take over the site at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to launch its Starship rocket. The move is aimed at supporting national security missions that current SpaceX sites, like Texas's Starbase or LC-39A, can't fully accommodate due to location or capacity limits. There's also the potential for future NASA collaborations tied to the Artemis program and Mars exploration efforts. So far, SpaceX's progress at this site has made significant strides. In early June 2025, the company received limited entry authorization from the U.S. Space Force to begin early preparations for Starship operations at the site. This approval enables SpaceX to start modifying the complex while a full lease agreement remains under review. To secure a full lease, the U.S. Space Force and Department of the Air Force require a comprehensive environmental impact statement. On June 6, 2025, a draft EIS was published, finding no significant environmental concerns and clearing the way for initial activities. The EIS process includes a 45-day public comment period, starting June 13, 2025, with both in-person and virtual meetings planned for July. A final EIS and an FAA record of decision are expected by fall 2025. SpaceX aims to begin launch operations from SLC-37 in 2026 once infrastructure development is complete. However, before any Starship launches occur from this location, SpaceX must obtain a separate launch license. Shortly after receiving limited approval, SpaceX began demolishing Delta IV-era infrastructure at the site, 
including the iconic mobile service tower. This demolition not only marks the end of ULA's operations at SLC-37, but also signals SpaceX's intent to rapidly transform the facility. The new Starship complex at SLC-37 will include two launch pads, each featuring a dedicated launch mount, a 600-foot-tall launch integration tower, taller than existing towers at both Starbase and LC-39A flame trench for handling engine exhaust. Both pads will be supported by a shared propellant storage tank farm with separate deluge water systems, following a layout similar to the one at SpaceX's Starbase in Texas. Roads near the site, including Phillips Parkway and Old A1A, will be widened and upgraded to accommodate the transport of massive rocket components. Initially, Starship stages will be built at Starbase in Texas and shipped to Florida by barge for testing and launch. In the long term, SpaceX plans to construct a large Starship production facility at Kennedy Space Center's Roberts Road to reduce reliance on Texas-based manufacturing. With two planned catch towers at Cape Canaveral, SpaceX is proposing up to 76 Starship launches per year from Space Launch Complex 37. This would translate to 152 landings annually, one for each stage. In contrast, Starbase in Texas is currently capped at 25 launches per year when combined with 44 planned launches and 88 landings. From LC-39A, Florida could host over 600 Starship-related operations annually. This makes Florida a central hub for both SpaceX's Mars ambitions and NASA's Artemis program. To support this growth, around 450 full-time employees or contractors will be required at SLC-37. While SpaceX is ramping up its Starship launch capabilities in both Texas and Florida, ULA is scaling back its operations, something clearly reflected in its decision to vacate SLC-37. This move follows the retirement of its Delta IV rocket family. Though Delta IV was a reliable and powerful system that supported critical national security missions for more than 20 years, it was significantly more expensive to operate compared to modern alternatives like SpaceX's Falcon rockets. For instance, the Delta IV heavy costs around $350 million per launch with a payload capacity of 28.8 tons, whereas SpaceX's Falcon Heavy offers 63.8 tons of capacity at just $150 million per launch in expendable mode. That cost disparity has made older systems like Delta IV less competitive in today's market. Enter Vulcan Centaur, ULA's next-generation rocket, designed to offer better performance and much lower costs. It can carry up to 27.2 tons and is priced at approximately $110 million per launch. ULA aims to make Vulcan affordable enough to compete for commercial contracts in addition to fulfilling missions under the National Security Space Launch Program, which serves U.S. intelligence and defense agencies. Vulcan is set to launch exclusively from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral. ULA chose not to convert SLC-37 for Vulcan operations, since SLC-41 had already been extensively upgraded to support both Atlas V and Vulcan Centaur including a modernized vertical integration facility and a new mobile launch platform. Consolidating operations at one launch site was intended to reduce costs and streamline logistics. This strategic consolidation comes as ULA faces major financial strain and declining dominance in the military launch sector. ULA's profitability has taken a hit in recent years falling from a peak of around $650 million in 2016 to just $80 million in 2023. Although things looked more optimistic in 2025 with 12 scheduled launches, projected to generate $320 million in profit, a 300% increase over 2023, uncertainty remains. According to the U.S. Air Force, ULA has a backlog of more than two dozen national security missions that have been delayed due to Vulcan's slow rollout. The transition from legacy Atlas and Delta vehicles to Vulcan has been sluggish, 
impacting the ability of the Space Force to meet its goals. As a result, the Pentagon has increasingly relied on SpaceX as a more dependable launch provider. SpaceX has taken over several national security missions originally assigned to ULA, including recent GPS satellite launches. The company has demonstrated a much higher launch cadence, completing dozens of Falcon 9 missions in a single year. This shift reflects a growing lack of confidence in ULA's reliability, especially with Vulcan's next flight still ambiguously scheduled for the fourth quarter of 2025. Meanwhile, SpaceX's influence in the space launch market continues to soar. Adding fuel to the fire, ULA's parent company, Boeing, reported a staggering operating loss of $10.7 billion in 2024, with operating margins falling to negative 16.1%. These losses, stemming largely from its commercial airplane division, limit Boeing's capacity to invest in and support subsidiaries like ULA. As a result, Boeing is now looking to sell ULA, with Blue Origin and Sierra Space emerging as potential buyers of the national defense contractor. Anyway, if you loved this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more. And let's keep exploring the cosmos together. The diverging paths of ULA and SpaceX perfectly capture the seismic shift happening in the space launch industry, from the era of old space to the rise of new space. Innovative, fast-moving companies are stepping in and taking the lead, leaving behind the slower, traditional aerospace giants. As of early 2025, SpaceX is absolutely dominating the orbital launch scene, responsible for over 57% of all successful missions. In 2024 alone, they pulled off a jaw-dropping 138 launches. Most of those carried Starlink satellites, which not only blanket the globe with internet coverage, but also generate steady revenue to bankroll even bigger ambitions, like the Starship program. Compare that with ULA, whose launch rate and payload capacity are much lower. In fact, in 2023, SpaceX launched over 300 times more payload than ULA. So how are these new space players outpacing the old guard? It all comes down to groundbreaking strategies that change the way space missions are built, funded, and launched. They're laser-focused on slashing costs, staying agile, inventing new business models, and using cutting-edge tech. For starters, new space companies keep expenses low with streamlined production, vertical integration, and automation. They smartly use commercial off-the-shelf parts, standardize systems, and fine-tune their supply chains. A prime example? SpaceX reuses its Falcon 9 boosters, dramatically reducing launch costs and turnaround times, something traditional expendable rockets can't compete with. Then there's the revolution in small satellites. The rise of small sats and CubeSats has opened the door to new markets with far fewer barriers to entry. Companies now build constellations that offer global services, like Starlink's broadband internet. These networks support scalable recurring revenue models, a far cry from the old model of launching massive one-off satellites.